In this video, I'm gonna give you 25 fishing tips for beginner bay anglers. Let's go. Hey Roman Castro here, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you enjoy fishing in San Diego, the bays of San Diego specifically, Mission Bay, San Diego Bay, consider subscribing to this channel for more tips and more information to help you become a better angler faster. I'm trying to speed up your learning curve click that bell notification so you don't miss anything. In this video, we're gonna go over 25 tips that I have for beginner anglers. So if you're new to fishing, these will be great for you. If you're already an experienced angler, you never know, you might catch a tip or two that you don't know yet or that you haven't heard before. So let's get started. If you don't wanna wait for me to go through the whole list uh, or if you wanna follow along with your own copy, I have a four page PDF that you can download by going to the link that I'm gonna put right here and you can put your email address in there, you'll be joining my email list, but at the same time, as soon as you join, I'll send you this free PDF. It's 25 tips for beginner bay anglers. Okay, I'm gonna try to get these tips done in under 10 minutes. So let's see, 25 tips in 10 minutes. Here we go. Tip number one is gonna help you get more fish, more bites, is gonna be to get on the water. So yes, it's it's a little bit more of a, of an investment. You could get a float tube, you get a kayak, uh, a boat if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you can get a boat. Uh, or uh, rent a skiff or borrow a kayak, whichever way you can to get on the water. You'll have access to areas that people from shore don't have access to, so that'll be a big advantage for you uh, getting started. Tip number two is to start off with the technique like a like a drop shot. The best setup that, that you could use as a beginner, just to get the feel for what the bite feels like, uh, is to use a drop shot. Uh, and if you want to look up a drop shot, I can I'll have put a video for it up here, and also a video for it in the description of this video. But yeah, so start off with a drop shot technique just so you have your lure in the strike zone for most of your of the of the cast and the retrieval. Tip number three, it's like a, a lot of people in fishing say it, they say, oh, tight lines, like it's as a way to say goodbye or like, I'll see you later. Uh, they say, oh, tight lines, or like, oh, tight lines, bro. Something like that. So that's, that's uh, actually excellent advice because if you don't have a tight line, you're not gonna feel the bite. It's kind of like sharks. Uh, the the fish don't, can't can't pick up the lure and look at it and say oh is this food they they're gonna they're gonna suck it into their mouth they're gonna taste it and instantly spit it out if it's not if it doesn't taste right if it doesn't feel right to them so uh, that little uh, bite is uh, what you want to feel and you won't feel that bite to be able to set the hook if uh, if you have slack in the line tip number four is to not set the hook on slack line especially if you're fishing drop shot light line. If you, if you set the hook too hard on 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 too much slack line, it'll it'll pop the line. So real quick example, this is a little section of six pound mono, and we're gonna illustrate the principle of why you should fish with a tight line. Besides not feeling the bite, uh, if you have a tight line, you'll be able to feel the bite. And when you set the hook, your line won't be slacked. That little that little motion right there, extended extended throughout all the way to where your lure is and the fish is, will give you enough uh, slack to be able to pop the line. Okay. So I'm gonna wrap it around my fingers. Hopefully I don't cut myself. And I'm gonna show you if I if I give it slack and then pop it, it'll it'll break. See? Okay. Now if I do the same, uh, and I don't, and I'm not doing, I'm not using that much force. It just, I'm just kind of using the momentum, right? Uh, if I just try to do it this way and try to break it like this, it's a lot harder. <laughs> it cuts into my hands, right? So uh, that kind of is a little example that somebody showed me at one of the tackle shops where I was at, one of the customers, and it proves the point exactly and it actually illustrates it very well. So when you feel the bite, you wanna make sure your line is not slack before you, before you set the hook. So you kinda of start to wind a little bit and roll, lower the rod and then set the hook at that point when you've taken up all the slack and your line is nice and tight, okay? Tip number five is uh, swings are free. Uh, basically, imagine you're, imagine you're playing baseball and there's no way to strike out. You can have as many strikes as you want, you could do a hundred strikes and you won't be out. It, that's fishing. If you feel something on the line, anything strange, the lack of contact with the floor or a little bump that's not like a little weed snag, you'll get used to the different feelings. Uh, go ahead and try. Go ahead and set the hook. Uh, if, if you miss, if it's not if it's not a fish, no big deal. You rip it out of the weeds it's in, or you rip it out of the rock it's in. But if it's a fish, you'll get a fish. And uh, like baseball, uh, you strike out after three swings. In fishing, you can swing as many times as you want. Tip number six is one that's near and dear to my heart. It's uh, know your regs. Know your regs is no excuses for not knowing the zones and the rules of the of the area you're fishing in. Uh, the game warden is not gonna care if you didn't know. He's gonna give you a ticket either way. So might as well educate yourself. 
know what how many hooks you can fish, how many rods you can fish, uh, what kind of fish you can take, because some fish are are in and out of some fish are regulated by seasons. So and there's also bag limits. There's also how many fish you can take for the day, how many how many fish you can take of that certain type of fish in the day. So know all those regulations before you go fish, or if you're gonna or if it's too hard for you to learn them all at once, learn the regulations for one fish, go target that one fish and figure all those roles out. And then once you learn how to catch that fish and all the regulations associated with that fish, move on to a next, move on to your, to the next target or another fish, add another fish to your, to your uh, target list. If you don't know what it is, if you don't know the rules for it, let it go. You gotta release it. Okay. Uh, tip number seven is for new guys, uh, my go-to knots is uh, my first knot with, with, uh, with mono or with fluorocarbon, I like to tie the San Diego jam knot. Uh, I'll put a link to the video down, down in the description where I show you how to tie a San Diego jam knot. My go-to knot for braid is a Palomar knot. If you don't know how to tie a Palomar knot, uh, I'll put a link, another link down there in the description for the, where I show you how to tie a Palomar knot, okay? Okay, tip number eight is to use super glue between the, if, you, if you're fishing swim baits on a little jig head, you put a little bit of super glue between the jig head and the, and where it connect, where it touches the the soft plastic, and you want that, and you want that to be glued, because I call it getting pants. Oh, no, I got pants. <laughs> I got pants. So this is what I call it when you get pants. <laughs> when the fish comes in and tries to eat it, look at that, it's brand new. Now it's all tore up. So it comes to eat it and takes your lure off the thing. So I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna start carrying some glue so I can glue it here. So don't get pants. Put some super glue on your uh, swim baits. Tip number nine has to do with when you're landing your fish. Uh, a lot of beginners will will reel all the way until the fish is like at the very end of the of the uh, fishing rod, and then at that point it's kind of weird because like the if you try to grab the fish, there's no slack in the line, and then your rod loads up and it's like a it's like it's like a loaded uh, spring, right? So if the if the fish decides to wiggle out and it and it throws a hook at that point, the, that's gonna whip out and it could hit you in the face. You reel so that you have about a rod's length of line from the tip of your rod to the fish. My hand's the fish down here, and then I leave the rod length of, of line, and I put the rod up, and the fish will just swing towards you. And then you just grab the line. Make sure you grab the line right above the hook so that the rod is not loaded down with the, with the weight of the fish. Because again, if you're trying to mess with the fish while the rod is loaded, if it somehow pops off, they're gonna get a, you're gonna get a hook to the face, or it's gonna pop up and it's gonna get into your hand. So it's very important to keep your rod unloaded once you once you bring the fish in. Well, check board. Oh, calico. Oh, calico. Oh. You keep the you keep the weight of the fish in the water by by just bringing its head out of the out on the surface and then giving yourself that rod length of line and then bringing the rod tip up and that'll bring the fish towards you. It's still going to be in the water, but its face and most of its like half of the fish is going to be out of the water. Uh, but that way your rod doesn't load up too much. So you grab the line right above the fish, bring it up, and then now the rod is like completely unloaded and it's not gonna, you don't have the risk of it like uh, uh, spitting out the hook and hooking you, your hand or your face or whatever. So now you have the, the line, the fish is hanging right there, and then you just kind of lift the fish from there. Uh, I'll show you a quick clip of how I do it on the kayak. Number 10. Okay, current and bait. Look for it. That's where you want to fish. You don't want to fish where there's like stagnant water. Uh, you want to fish where where there's current and where fish can go uh, ambush uh, bait. So the bait will get pushed. The bait can't swim as well in the current as the bigger fish can. But yeah, you're going to fish around currents. Tip number eleven kind of bled into t tip number number ten, and that is how do you find current? You find it by by looking at the tides, and the tides of, are of course uh, uh, it looks like a sine wave, right? Like this half hour before and half hour after the peaks that's when it's going to be the slowest fishing you want to fish when there's the most currents and and water movement and you're going to be able to tell when that's going to happen by looking at these tide charts tip number 12 is just basically a little bit of insight as for me as a as a spear fisherman I'm, I'm i'm a diver i used to dive around mission bay a lot looking for halibut and i could always see spotted bay bass everywhere and like those things like to hang out in in in, in like not in groups like they're not right next to each other but they do like to uh, hang out in same like general areas. Like I, I would snorkel whole different parts of the bay, and I would I wouldn't see anything. And then when I w would come up on a couple of spotties, I would see like 
they, that they were, were in the same general area. So if you catch a spotted bay bass, make sure you cast a couple more times in that same spot uh, and around that spot because there's probably uh, others in that same zone, okay? So especially in the eelgrass. They like to, once they find a nice little patch of eelgrass, they all seem to like the same patch of eelgrass. Tip number 13. When you're fishing and you snag, you snag some grass, you bring it up. If it's brown grass, you don't want to fish there because brown grass is decaying grass, it's dying. And part of the decaying process means releasing CO2, which is not oxygen, which means that that water is not as oxygenated as water that's where there's green grass, okay? Because green grass takes light from the sun and, and through photosynthesis makes uh, food for itself, but at the same time, the by byproduct of that is to create oxygen. And that's what the spies like to be in those spots because green grass creates oxygen, that's oxygenated water, the fish need that to uh, to live, of course, right, to breathe. So think of it that way. If you find brown grass, move to a different spot where there's green grass because that's going to be where there's oxygenated, oxygenated water and that's where the fish want to be. Number 14, cast against the current. So if you look at this flag up here, you see how the grass is all leaning back and the, sp and the spot is facing up current. So in this flag, the current is going that way and the spot is facing the opposite direction. Okay, so if this flag is our, is our indicator, you wanna cast that way. And then when your lure's coming this way, along the bouncing along the grass, it's not gonna get snagged because all the grass is facing this way. It'll get less slack. It'll, instead of going like, it'll just kinda of go like this, right? Like this. And it won't get snagged, or it's less likely to get snagged. Also, the fish is right. The fish is facing it, so it's gonna see it coming down the pike, and it's gonna just grab it, right? Uh, so that's the reason why you cast up current. Tip number fifteen is is to fish where others can't, and that kind of goes back a little bit to getting off the shore and getting on the water. Uh, it's it's just a matter of, of pressure, right? So if if uh, everybody can get to a certain fishing spot and it's like easy to get to, and you could just park and walk right up to it and cast, and then that spot's gonna be pretty pressured even if it's really, really good. Uh, and if you can figure out, if you go for like a little bit of longer walk away from the parking lot, do that, then you're gonna have way more chances of finding fish that are not as skittish, <laughs> not as pressured. Tip number 16 is to fish slow. Um, a lot of beginners will do, will cast, and as soon as their lure hits the water, they start reeling it in like relatively fast. And what you're doing at that point is you're casting it and, and you're not giving the lure Depending on the weight of the lure, you're not giving it enough time to sink down to the bottom where these bodies like to live, right? They like to live close to the grass or on the floor. Uh, and so if you just, if you're, unless it's, unless it's really shallow where you're fishing, they won't, they're, not, they're not even going to see your lure. You got to cast out, let the lure sink to the bottom, and then reel it in super slow. And if you're reeling it in and you're not feeling any little bumps or nicks, then you're going too fast. You're, you're swimming the bait out of the strike zone. I mean, there's other techniques for top water and stuff, but we're not talking about top water. We're talking about uh, getting the spotted bay bass in the eelgrass where they live. Tip number 17 is a, is a tip on how to retrieve your lure after you cast it. And it's gonna be to retrieve it low and slow. It's basically, you cast it out and you keep your, the angle of your rod like around there so that you can feel all the little nicks and bumps that we talked about in, in tip 16, okay? And then tip number 18 is, uh, to, is another retrieval technique. It's uh, dragon paws. Um, it, it, it was a funny thing at one of the seminars that Afrin did from Warbaits. Uh, he said uh, he was giving a seminar and he's, and he's talking about dragon paws and, and uh, to me it sounded like like a, like a dragon's paws. <laughs> but he was talking about dragging the lure and then pausing but the pause is you um, resetting for another drag. You're, once your lure hits the floor you're lifting the rod tip up without reeling so that it drags the lure on the floor. And then you have to lower your rod again to reset. And as you're lowering it, you're taking up the slack to keep that line tight. And then while you're taking up the slack and bringing the, the rod down, the lure is not moving. So from the fish's perspective, it's getting dragged and paused. From your perspective, you're, you're, you're bringing the rod tip up, no reeling, and that's gonna drag the lure forward. And then you're lowering it and taking up the slack, and then you're doing that. So drag, pause, drag, pause, okay? Drag and pause. Tip number 19 is uh, crucial. Stay hydrated, especially if you're on a kayak or, or a float tube uh, where you're on the water. Just because you're on the water doesn't mean you can't get dehydrated, especially being out there in the sun if it's hot. Uh, and when you get dehydrated, 
your blood kind of thickens. So if you're at risk for a heart attack or anything like that, uh, not being hydrated is going to give you a higher probability of having an issue, okay? I know most of you guys are young. This is something you don't care about. Uh, for you uh, more senior guys, make sure you stay hydrated especially. Even, it, this, this could happen to anybody, just saying. Make sure you stay hydrated, that way your body is functioning at, a, at its full potential. If you start to feel thirsty, at that point you're already dehydrated. So you gotta just drink even if you don't feel thirsty. You gotta keep drinking uh, so you don't get dehydrated, okay? Now, tip number 20 is uh, an another safety one, which is gonna be to use polarized glasses. Uh, it's gonna do, it's gonna give you two things. It's gonna give you protection for your eyes for, from like flying stuff, like splashing water, uh, lures. If anything flies at your face, you want to have the eye protection. And then uh, on top of that, you want to have polarized glasses because that's going to allow you to see through the glare on the surface of the water. And you'll be able to see more of the structure like the sand or the sand, like like the sand, the eelgrass, the deeper parts. It's kind of cool. Like it's, uh, it's uh, if you haven't used polarized glasses, it's highly recommended. Even if you're fishing from shore, uh, you can see where the eelgrass is and like you see a little sometimes there's eelgrass and there'll be a little a little separation in the eelgrass and then more eelgrass along the shore and you want to cast in those little channels where like the fish are ready to ambush stuff that swims by so you won't be able to see that if you don't have polarized glasses so get polarized glasses for you to be able to sight fish better and for you for your protection continuing on the protection thing sun, sun protection I hate wearing sunscreen it, <laughs> it makes me uh, irritated like both uh, I think I'm allergic to it. It puts me in a bad mood when my eyes still react to it. So I don't like to wear sunscreen, but I do have to wear sun protection, right? Because you don't want to get skin cancer. So make sure you wear some kind of sun protection. If you're okay with wearing sunscreen, wear sunscreen. Make sure you especially cover your hands. We, it's, uh, it's something that we overlook because our hands are always out and we don't consider like uh, getting burnt on our hands. But yeah, we gotta protect your hands. So I wear gloves and long sleeve shirts all the time and uh, a hat and a face shield and then my glasses just to keep me protected from the sun because I don't like to wear sunscreen. Uh, but yeah, so that's uh, sun protection is, is again, uh, tip number 21. All right, now we're gonna go tip number 22. Tip number 22 is to experiment. If somebody tells you that something's not gonna work because they've been fishing for 20 years and that's not how, how your fishing is, ignore them. Ignore them to a certain extent. Uh, if they tell you it can't be done or, or you shouldn't do it that way, ask why not. And if, and if they don't have a good reason for it, then try it, it might work, it might be something that you, you'll even be able to teach them, right? So the whole point of, uh, the whole point of tip number 22 is to experiment. So you wanna try all the different lures you can get your hands on, uh, see how they work for you, see how, how they perform, and then uh, if somebody recommends the lure to you, yeah, just take them up on it. Uh, get Grab one and see how, how it performs for you. And then, uh, yeah, so it's, just be, be have, have an open mind, be willing to try different lures and, and different techniques, and that's gonna make you a better angler overall. Tip number 23 is gonna be to fish with a purpose. That means that you wanna have uh, something that you're working on for that session, right? So for example, like sometimes, uh, like when I was trying to learn uh, uh, how to walk uh, a spook on the on, on top water, like I would have, I would schedule, I would set up an outing and just go out and practice walking it, right? So it goes back and forth, right? Or practice walking a frog, right uh it's it's uh it gives you like uh additional motivation to go out there to fish and at the same time you're not just out there doing the same thing over and over and over and over again you're actually improving and learning new skills and adding those skills to your to your toolbox and then when you're when you need them you'll be able to uh to use them tip number 24 is to watch a lot of fishing videos especially mine I'm kidding. <laughs> no but watch all the fishing videos you can because uh, you'll see what works for people uh, and you'll see what's working for people and you'll see what areas they're fishing in and and how the retrieval is depending on how they edit their videos the way I edit my videos I like to leave a little bit of everything in there just so you guys can kind of learn if you have the 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 mindset of, of learning you'll be able to get a lot from my videos I leave the the cast I leave uh, the background in there so you guys can kind of figure out where I'm fishing I leave uh, part of the the retrieve before I get it hooked up so you guys can see how I was retrieving the lure uh, and I leave that all that stuff in there on purpose so if somebody wants to learn from watching my videos and they're really committed to it and they have the mind to actually look for that kind of stuff they're not just kind of watching it for entertainment they can learn from my video just by watching that okay so uh, that is a tip number 24 watch a lot of fishing videos so you can learn from other people not just me but especially me <laughs> 
Tip number 25 is kind of an extension of my spear fishing stuff is to do a fishing log. You want to keep track of what fish you caught and and uh, in what areas and and what the time of the day was, what the current was, what the temp was. Anything you feel is relevant, right? Because eventually, once you get enough entries into your fishing log, you're going to be able to figure out patterns, especially uh, in um, if you're fishing like me, like Mission Bay and San Diego Bay. Like Mission Bay, I I feel pretty confident that I can catch a fish no matter what in Mission Bay. And I can almost feel like I'm skunk proof in Mission Bay at this point. Just because I know uh, a lot of the activity, how it works now. And I, I, keep, I keep logs and I can go back and review and figure out, okay, so last year I was fishing on this area and the temperature was like this and the, the, the barometer was like that. And I can kind of like know which areas to kind of go to to check out and, and it kind of gives me a, a kind of like a, a better game plan to go to go try these certain spots that have, were productive before uh, whereas if I was new I just kind of have to sh I would just kind of have to show up and fish everywhere and try to see try to figure out where I, where I can get a bite right so that's uh tip number 25 is to keep a fishing log and then I'm gonna give you guys a bonus tip it's it, it's also in the pdf it, uh, it is that the bonus tip is that it's okay to be new and to enjoy the process of learning. Don't let other people that see you out there fishing and struggling, if they're not gonna be helpful to you, just ignore them. Uh, if, they're gonna, if they're gonna help you and they're gonna uh, give you some pointers and, and uh, give you some feedback, positive feedback, then yeah, listen to them. But if they're gonna be like haters and all that kind of stuff, just ignore them, enjoy yourself. If you're catching one fish a session, that is awesome. If you're not catching any fish, when I started fishing, my, my whole philosophy on it was, hey, if I'm not catching any fish, at least I'm out here. It's nice, the weather's so nice, and the weather's awesome. It's sunny, uh, or even, even on a rainy day, it's just nice to be out, out on the water. I love being on the water. So being on the water is like already like a, a win, and, and catching a fish is like a bonus, right? So that's the way you gotta look at it as a beginner, and then you're gonna start catching fish, and next thing you know, you won't be skunking, and next thing you know, you'll be getting 100 spotties in one day. Uh, <laughs> I think we blew past 10 minutes, but it's okay. Uh, if you want these tips in a written form, I have a PDF you can download. Again, it's four pages. You can print it out or you can read it on your computer. And that is going to be available at the link right here. You'll join my email list. And in that email list, the first thing I'm going to send you is that four page PDF. And then I'm also going to send you uh, other information and tips as I discover things in fishing. If you're right at the beginning of your fishing journey and you're starting out from scratch, you might want to check out this video where I go over exactly the techniques I used to catch 100 spotted bay bass in one day. And if you don't believe me, here's a video for 100 spotted bay bass in one day. <laughs> Hope you enjoy these tips and not only are they educational, but motivational to get you out there and fishing. Okay, so I'll talk to you guys later. I'll see you on the water. Woo!